the sounds of shelling is constant just outside here in Kyiv. These towns, as you can see, have been shelled repeatedly and heavily by the Russians. We were driving down a very long road and we came up to a checkpoint just as we approached the first barrier, the first shell landed. And then out of nowhere, the second one lands. I open my eyes, I finally wake up and I'm in the hospital room. The leg had come off, I had big metal poles sticking out of me. We crossed the border to Poland. We were then passed on to the Americans. They get him to Landstuhl. There was a decision made at Landstuhl to send him to Brook Army Medical Center, which has a very good burn unit, the best in the military. Hey, Thanks, everyone. It was always to America. We were never going anywhere else. We just knew that's where we were going to get the best care. He came in on a CCAT team, which is an Air Force asset. It was two or three o'clock in the morning when Dr. Jen Gurney and I met Benji on the flight. We understood that this was blast injury in the face of this mortar attack and in a very dirty environment. He was still critical in that initial phase. He had about a 17% burn, already had an amputation on his right leg partial foot amputation of his left leg. The middle aspect of his foot had literally been blown apart. And then his left hand was missing the whole middle portion. Some of these wounds had become infected given the blood loss and the long evacuation process. Benji went to the operating room every day, spanning into every other day. I had this big operation last night, one of the many that I'm having to regain my legs and my limbs and my life, really. We continue to try to bring experts to the table and make each intervention the best that it could possibly be. Casey Sabag is one of my absolutely brilliant hand and microvascular surgeons that was helping us with the metacarpal loss, eradicating infection. He was resilient and he was willing to try anything and everything that we kind of threw at him. And the nurses have become very good friends of mine. We talk about families, we spend time together. They have jobs which change people's lives. The ICU, really severe injuries come through here. We try to be not only his healthcare providers, but to be his family here, because everybody, I think everybody needs that. They are so kind and they push you when you need to be pushed and they help you when you need to be helped. I've just been amazed at these people. He started out in the intensive care unit and then eventually went to our progressive care ward. He had a really great attitude and we all loved working with him. I'm in a really good mood, mainly because I had my operation yesterday and all seemed to went well, but also because I just saw a video from all the girls at home. I love you, Dada. Hi, Daddy. I love you. I love you so much and I really want you to come back this very moment. He would have his regular calls with his family, which is incredibly important for recovery. You get a patient like Benji, you start your assessment, it's like, okay, on a scale of one to 10, you know, what's your pain? And he said, not enough to make me not go to work. We have one of the best rehab teams in the country. Our doctors save their lives, our nurses keep them alive, and physical therapy, occupational therapy, we give them a life. Ben had goals to do a lot and go back to work and all stuff, but we have to start with standing up walking, getting stronger. Next up was the big step. That's because I tried on for the first time my first new leg, and I took a couple of steps. I got to see him take some of his first steps with uh, the new prosthetic. The first day I got a leg, uh, I took one or two steps on it. Loved it. Every day was about doing more, just getting better. It just feels like a corner has been turned, that I've reached a point that I, to be honest, at some point wasn't sure would make it. Motivated and, and ready to go and ready to get better, that's how Ben was every day. Every day was about doing something I didn't do the day before. So if I could take two steps one day, I was gonna take three steps the next. His motivation really changed 
all of us. There were days that were more challenging than others. Benji would routinely look at me and just say, okay, Doc, what do you got? This may be a bad day, but I'll have a good day tomorrow. Boy. He is one of the most resilient individuals I have ever met. On the day this happened, and I was sitting on the ground and I had no leg, and there was one thing I thought, and that was I had to go home. Whatever it takes, I'm going back to see the family. And that's today. All the nurses came out and just were excited because just to see him walking through here, tall, feeling good and saying, hey, this is my last day, I'm, I'm walking out of here and it's because we did this together. The patient like that leaves. I took the next day off, I did. I'm just not gonna go into work today because he's not gonna be there. I just remember texting Benji with a, hey brother, I'm gonna miss you dearly on a daily basis because you're the ultimate human return on investment. I'm saying goodbye to people that were my whole life for a while. It's not the relationship that I thought I would just have with your doctor. It's a lot more than that. They pick you up, they encourage you, they push you. And they're the ones that got me to where I am today. I, no doubt about it. I remember arriving here, I felt pretty broken. My legs were terrible, couldn't move at the time. And I'm leaving as someone who's learned a lot, as someone who's optimistic, as someone who's happy. And I feel like I'm someone stronger now. See you later.